Want to upload files to SharePoint Online using Graph API and Postman? Then, you found the right tutorial. Hello everyone, today in this video, I will show you how to upload files to SharePoint Online Document Library using the Postman tool. In Microsoft Graph API very quickly step by step. So, basically, these are the six steps you need to follow if you want to upload your file from your local drive to SharePoint using Graph API and Postman tool. Here from the step number one to six is mandatory and step number seven is the optional one. Now, let's discuss these steps in detail. What are these steps? Step number one, you need to register an app in your Azure portal app registrations. Step number two, you need to generate an access token from your Postman tool for your Azure Graph API permissions. For this is the URL or endpoint you need to use. Step number three, you need to retrieve your SharePoint site ID where you want to upload your file. You need to pass your tenant name in the API. This will give you the site ID where you want to upload your document. Step number four, you need to find your document library ID. Using this graph API endpoint, you will get all document library details from your given site. Here, you need to find your drive ID or document library ID and copy this to Notepad. Step number five, step five, upload your file to SharePoint. Send a put or session-based upload request to transfer your file to SharePoint Online. You can see the API endpoint format. Step number six, verify your upload in SharePoint. Go to your SharePoint document library and confirm that the file has been uploaded successfully. And this last step is the optional one. Step number seven, optional read document library content. Use Graph API in Postman to fetch and list all the files stored in your document library. You can see the API endpoint for this request on the screen. With these steps, you can seamlessly upload and manage files in SharePoint Online using Postman and Graph API. Now, let's put these steps into action, right? This is my Postman tool session. First, I will go to my app registration in Azure portal. I'm not explaining how I've created this app registration. For this, I have a separate video in my channel, how to create an app registration in Azure portal. So I'm concerned about that. I'm verifying whether I have proper permissions for my Graph API or not. So this is the Graph API and this is the demo app registration. I have created, I had created it for some other purpose, but I am using this here as well. So I'm ensuring that my Graph API has required read write permissions. With the application type and admin consent granted. So all these things I need from here. My setup is fine in the Azure app registration. I'm not explaining or spending time on this. Now, let's go to the step one in my Postman session. What I've explained in my presentation. First, you need to get the access token. So this is the token I have generated. How I have generated. Let's explain that. Go to your Authorize tab. Then select the auth type as OAuth 2.0. Then go to the Configure New Token section. To create a new token, you need to pass all the parameters here. So this is my token name. This is the grant type, selected as client credentials. And this is the URL to generate the access token I have passed here. In this access token URL, you need to pass your tenant ID. And this is the client ID I got from my Azure app registration. Then this is the client secret value. This also I got from my Azure app registration. So tenant ID, client ID, and client secret you need to. Get from Azure App Registration. I have created a separate video on how to generate an access token from the Postman tool where you will get the detailed steps. So using this method, I have generated access token dynamically from my Postman tool. Now I want to get the site ID where I want to upload file. For that, what I have done is added a new request, get site ID to my Postman collection. I have selected the get request 
and pass the graph API where I need to pass my tenant name and site name. This is the API endpoint. So if you notice ZTNCX is my tenant name and demo site is my site. Name. I'll just hit the send button. Got an error. Let's see what's that. Access token is expired. So I need to get a new token. I have to generate the new token here. My token has been expired, so it is not working. So let's create a new token. Here is the new token. I have just created a new token, and now I should not have this issue. Right? Let's click on the send button again. Yes, with this new token. I'm able to see the 200 OK response code, which means it executed successfully. Let's look at the JSON. Output. And look for the ID. Attribute. I got this ID attribute here. Now I have to look at the value for this. So if you look at this ID attribute, there are three values separated by commas and this is the site ID. The middle value is the site ID. So I have noted down this one in my notepad. Then I will use this site ID in the next query or next API call. So I got a 200 okay status and I got my site ID and then I need to find the document library ID or drive ID. I have created get library details request in my Postman collection and pass this endpoint and the site ID I have passed from the previous step. This will give me all drives from my site. Drives are nothing but document libraries. Let's click on this send button. Yes, 200 OK status. So here also the output came 200 OK. That means it is successful and I could see this ID. Attribute, I need to see the ID attribute value. So for the ID attribute, this is the value. I see this is the document library ID or drive ID and for. Which document library is this ID for? You can see this is the name of the document library. And this is the URL of that document library. And I need this document library ID. Once you find the document library ID, you can use that in the create new document graph API endpoint. Now I got what I need for the new document creation in SharePoint Online. Like I got the document library ID, got the site ID from get site ID request. Then I got the document library ID from the get library details request. So both I have noted down in my notepad. Then this is the document library ID I can use in my next request. So now I can straight away go ahead and upload files. For that, I will add another request to upload a file to SharePoint. I have named that request as upload file to SharePoint and selected the method as put request. This is the API endpoint URL. So you can see the drive ID after drives. Here I have passed my document library ID. This is the root. Then I have given the name of this file, which I'm going to create, followed by this content, right? Now what I have to do is select the auth type as OAuth 2.0 from the authorization tab. And then I need to select the access token that I have generated. A list of tokens will be displayed here. So I have selected my token, which I need. If your token is expired, you can create it the way I have shown and you can replace it. So this is the token for my put request I have passed. Now, I need to configure the body part of this put request where I can upload my file from my local drive. See here what I have done is, I went to this body tab, then selected the binary type and I have uploaded this file from my local drive. Now, I can upload my file from my local drive. I will upload a test file from my local drive. So I have uploaded this file now. My endpoint and everything is set up. I would say I click on this. 
Send button. This file should be created or uploaded in my SharePoint site document library, right? So let's click on the send button. Yes, I got 201 created status. That means my file has been created successfully. Now I can go to my document library in my SharePoint site and I can see that a new file has been created automatically. Let's refresh this page. Yes, I can see that. My new file has just been created now. This file has been created using my Postman tool all right, and if you notice, you will see modified by and created by will be with the SharePoint app account and not the actual user. By now, we saw that. Very quickly, I was able to upload my file from my local drive using the Graph API and Postman tool. Now I will show you how to read all the files from this document library using the Graph API endpoint. So for that, I have one more request get document, library content, and this is the get request, and I am passing this endpoint and drives then drive ID, that means that is my document library ID. This is my document library ID, and then followed by the root and children. Then let's execute this get request. This is a get request, and the token will be used automatically. The access token will be mapped to my get request automatically, right? So let's click on this send button. Got the 200 OK response code. That means my API has been executed successfully, and I'll be able to see all the files from my document library, right? So these are the files and folders I have in my document library, and you can see all the files and folders have come from my document library. If you're planning to call Graph API from your .NET, Java, Dynamics GP, CRM, SAP, or any third-party application, it's crucial to test it first using Postman or Graph Explorer. This tutorial helps you validate your API requests, ensuring smooth authentication and data retrieval. Once your API testing is successful, you can confidently integrate it into your applications for seamless automation and data exchange. So that's all for today. I hope you liked and enjoyed this demo and learned something new today. If this helped you, kindly consider subscribing to my channel. In the upcoming days, I'll come up with many trending videos on Microsoft's latest technologies like Microsoft Copilot, Gen AI, Power Platform, Power Apps, Power Automate, Power Pages, SharePoint Online, Artificial Intelligence, and many more. Kindly be with me and help me to grow on this journey. Thank you.